McDonald's Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have <laughs> one part of the dynamic duo. I am here with just Julie Goldman. Sad. Um, you guys, don't worry. <laughs> Nothing has happened We're to Brandy. Okay. She just, <laughs> you know, I guess had a cold. And so we are going to spend the hour talking about Brandy. No, just kidding. <laughs> no. She's the best I, friend I ever had. It is fine. Yeah. Rest in peace. No, she's fine. <laughs> she's, she's fine. She's good. But we have so much to talk about, Julie, yes. that I think it's just going to be great just you alone. <laughs> um I want to do a little update on all the Brandy stuff. Brandy, sorry, Brittany stuff. Which is the Brandy stuff, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She loves Brittany. God. Okay. So you listened to the 20 minutes audio tape. Did you listen to it or not? No. So she released a 20 <laughs> minute audio tape, 22 minute audio tape. Yeah. Oh. Not really anything new that we didn't know, but it was just from her own words of what that conservatorship was like. Oh. And, um, and she put it out on her own YouTube, and then it was made private. And anyway, everyone got it. Her mom uh, say, said that um, – she Brittany says that the abuse was at the hands of her family, and the mother reacted and said, Brittany, I have been trying to be with you, get a hold of you, contact you for years, oh. and please just, like, let me in. Mm. And um, – which I think is, you know – Is look, that true? Because people would all talk shit about the mom, too. I mean, I don't know. I think everybody is guilty right. in in right. Right. living off of her uh, and yep. abusing her. Whether they, whether the mom went to bed every night knowing she was fucking over her daughter yeah. at the hands of her ex husband or not, mm -hmm. maybe she realizes now and she really does want to make amends. But I also don't blame Brittany for being like, I don't want any of my family around me, mm -hmm. the brother, the sister, the mom, or the dad ever again. Yeah, I don't think that's unhealthy. I don't think anyone should try to get her to be close with these people again. I probably think the best thing to be would be like to go forward and just focus on building a better relationship with her teenage sons, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. hopefully the husband is is good. I would think so. I mean, you'd think they would give her a little space, like yeah. give her a little space. You know what I mean? Even when you have a fight with your own parent or sibling, and we're not even in this situation. I need a little... Right. We need a little space. Let's so, give it a couple. So, this was juicy yesterday. Okay. Um, this guy, your best friend, Joshua, he's on TikTok, he's on Instagram. This came to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mentioned when I talked about this on Tuesday, I re said I was always so curious about her one-time fiance, Jason Tarek. Is, is that his last name? Jason? Anyway, his... What is his name here? Jason... Jason... Trawick, Trawick. He was this uh, UTA or William Morris agent that represented her. They fell in love. Mm -hmm. He left William Morris, but he was right there when the conservatorship started. Or maybe he even started to maybe date her while she was in conservatorship. But as you know, the minute the conservatorship started, she was doing How, to Met, How I Met Your Mother and then doing the Planet Hollywood. So he lived mm -hmm. with her during those first years of Planet Hollywood uh, they were engaged. He no longer was at William, William Morris, and they were this couple, and he's a good-looking like good guy. Mm -hmm. And then they broke up, and all the articles were like, she wanted to have another baby. He really never wanted to have kids. I hung out with him one night. He was still not married, living in Vegas, and had never had any kids. And he was, and I was like, what happened? And this was before the conservatorship blew up. This was like pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. And he was smart enough not to tell me. <laughs> so yesterday, this guy goes, oh, my God. This, this guy, your friend Joshua, on Jason's Instagram, which is private, on his stories, oh. there was a photo of, this is my boyfriend's apartment, or I'm, at, I'm with oh. my boyfriend at my apartment. <laughs> I'm finally out and free. Oh. And there's a photo of Britney in the apartment. And this goes wild. Now, this guy, like on Instagram, he only has 7,000 followers. People sent it to me. I was like, okay, let's wait a minute. But, you know, I will definitely share that this exists on Juicy Scoop Obsessed. Mm -hmm. Well, then <laughs> this morning, TMZ exclusive, Britney's ex fiance, Jason Trawick, says, I'm not gay. A friend pulled an IG prank. He said he left his phone. And this person did this, and that he is not gay. 
which for the 12 hours uh-huh. that I thought I, I was told he was gay, look, whenever... Who's any, the boyfriend then? Who... Meaning someone just said it. Like someone got his, fr- like a friend got his phone. And just was like. And wrote this from his account. Like I'm finally out and really? gay and free. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I honestly. <laughs> okay. What I, grown person does that? Okay. I just, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't, I don't okay. Know. When I heard the news, mm-hmm. I called Chris Frangella and told him. Sure. And because we talked about it on the show. And listen, when someone tells me they're gay. I don't question it. Me neither. I accept it. And believe you, me. I'm like, hey, (laughs) who doesn't love a late in life lesbian, an old gay, sure, a Mormon gay that's been married with six kids? Bring on all the gayness. Remember the girl that was kidnapped by the weird, the Elizabeth Smart. Yes, you know, she gay too. No, her dad is. Oh, her dad's gay. Her dad came out gay. (laughs) And Fortune was performing. Fortune Feimster, a lesbian, Mm -hmm. and they said. Oh my God! He had just come out. Mm-hmm. He's in the audience, <gasps> like really putting on his gay flag, going oh, wow. to a Fortune Feimster concert, wow. right? Well, good and for then him. she knew it, and she has this really <clears throat> funny bit in her act mm-hmm. where she says, "You know, a lot of kids were getting kidnapped in the '80s, <laughs> but because I'm fat, like no one wanted to kidnap a fat kid. Yeah. It was like a really funny joke." Mm-hmm. And as the words are coming out of her mouth, she realized, "Oh my God, that Elizabeth Smart's oh dad is in the audience." Nightmare. Then you're ahead, then you're outside what do you of do? your butt. What you do? You're, when that has happened to me before, where I start doing a bit that all of a sudden I realize could Ugh. hurt the feelings of someone I know in the audience. Oh, well, yeah. It's yeah. like Ugh. an out-of-body experience. That's it's true. So I, it throws off your whole show. That's true. Um, he still had a wonderful time. Oftentimes, I don't know. If, but anyway, <sighs> so I was like, this could be it. But I was a little confused because I'm like, I really thought he probably did really fall in love with her, saw the weirdness of the conservatorship, whatever, to give him the benefit of the doubt, and just realized, like, this just isn't for me. That's what I always thought happened. Then I heard the gay thing, and I'm like, hey, people are gay. He (laughs) did not see gay at all on the night that I hung out with him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. He, he didn't have acting, dicks in his mouth. He 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 seemed like he was, like, interested in girls. But I was like, hey, that can change in an instant. In an Abby moment. In an Abby moment. Listen, you can't say that one hasn't been out with someone and maybe that someone you think is gay. And then they're like, oh, that guy. Not right. to say that's happened to me. Right, right. Yeah. But I'm just saying maybe that might happen. You know what I mean? But it um, <laughs> I, I tend to believe that this was a prank and that I tend so to believe weird. he is not gay. I mean, okay, maybe he's I, not but I think gay. there could be some real juicy scoop of what he knew. I think he I'm definitely sure. signed an NDA and can definitely not tell what he saw and what he did. He might have even been paid off to break up with her. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who but knows? I don't know what he lives off in Las Vegas. He's not an agent anymore. I don't know that he's a manager anymore. I'm sure he does deals. Who knows what? I think maybe he could say I'm in real estate. I don't know what he does. But he. I would like to know. What happened? I'd like to know who his friend is. I'd like to know if he's still friends with him. I'd like to know who... He does, I'd like to know if he still blows him. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know if they're still gay together. I want to know if they're still boyfriends. Yeah. I just would like to know just who... Of all the things, it's just like, why... It just seems... It wasn't his boyfriend. It was his thruple partner. Or, or his... Yeah. Right. His third, whatever. You know what I mean? The twink, the pastor, whatever it yeah. is. It's just like, sir, what is that? Why is that your big... Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? Find something else. Like, um, But this was juicy. Okay, this girl, she's got a big TikTok following too. Her mm. name is, what is her name? I can't, Nuna. Anyway, she found this guy, Skip Dennison's uh, Twitter, I believe. And he basically says, I signed an NDA. I'm former Marine, but I'm also oh. gay. So when I was oh. asked to help run the security for Britney's meet and greets at mm. Pan- ha- Planet Hollywood, I was like, absolutely. Nice. I had done it for someone before. So he's like, I knew how to do it, whatever. And they, they were happy to have like former military. He signed an NDA, but mm-hmm. now he's like, I don't give a shit. I'm <sighs> telling you. Yes. And she kind of recapped it. And basically he said... You know, it, it felt like sex trafficking uh, it, that like she had to do this thing. And also the odd. Oh, she referenced in her 22 minutes. She's like, I know my shows were shit. I they was were, just like a robot. Let me just stop you, you for you a go? second. We saw her, Tell. Brandy Howard and I. Yes. In who's sick today? Not here. Um, 
in uh, in Vegas during the height of all of this. Okay, and- the height. We had um, standing stage tickets. Mm-hmm. I saw. I could see her. I saw her so close that I could see multiple spanks on. I mean, okay. I, I, we could see it. But I got to tell you something. The bitch did the dancing. Okay, she did it all, and I thought she did. We had it was one of the best nights of my life. So do you think she's being hard on herself? I'm, I'm not she, kidding. So then, so is I'm not she kidding. looking? Is she being hard on herself? Because I think so. I never heard that the show sucked. The show was good. I the she, show she was, was a, good. She said in her audio, like I was wearing wigs. I know my performances suck. We saw the wigs. They probably, you know, Brittany at fifty percent is still better than ninety nine percent of the performers. It was so. still it was, and what I loved about it and her was that it wasn't it wasn't like. Uh, it was press the track, press play, lip sync the song, and do the dancing. Don't even try. Just don't. That's don't not what try. we're here for. We're here to, to dance and sing along and watch you dance. And she did it. I mean, so, she did it. And costumes and spanks and wigs, extensions, we could see it all. Right. Absolutely amazing. So this guy said that he felt really badly for for her. And then also he felt badly for the people that paid $2,500 for the meet and greet oh. because they were... Rush, they were rushed through, but that oh. wasn't at the hand of Britney. It right. was like that's what they were told to do, and then they would complain, that I believe, and all of that. So maybe more people will come forward to break an NDA when it comes to Britney because what the hell are you going to do about it now? Yeah, what are you going to do about it now? What and you really think the dad's know. going to come sue them? I mean, like, no. And then her delight of an ex husband, um, ugh. <laughs> garbage this gar I mean hey, I'm Fed, sorry we'll be doing 60 minutes Australia mm-hmm. which comes out Sunday I mean I will watch it you will uh, watch it yeah I'm gonna uh, watch it of course it. we're gonna of watch we're it gonna we're watch gonna see it. all the clips I wanna, oh. and you know I listen I at one point I wasn't defending him but I was like you know, people are like, ah, oh, he hasn't had a job, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I know, but he also, like, raised those boys pretty well mm-hmm. during her conservatorship. Even if she would have said, God, I would have loved to have been a stay-at-home mom. We don't know. But at least they had a steady force with the dad who, even, you hate him or not, but he has a wife that he's had for a while now. He helped raise his other kids. They raised <laughs> him together. But that gravy train of Brittany is stopping. I think the younger boy is, like, 15 or 16. So the minute they turn 18, she never has to give him another dime. If she wants well, to pay for the boys' college, if we, she wants to buy them a condo, she can. But right. he can't force her to, and he right. can't manage any money. So uh, he probably will have a podcast coming out soon. I'm quite sure. I don't appreciate that <laughs> On thing. On the real that he, with yeah, K-Fed. I, mean, <laughs> I just like a K-Fed, what is it? a dad. It's going to be a dad podcast. <sighs> like how to parent. How to deal with teenagers. Just And I guess how you deal with when them is when, put your mom on blast while yeah. she's begging them to get respect from them. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, those tapes were... I am sorry. The tapes were crazy because they weren't even bad. Every, they weren't bad Every at all. mom was like, who hasn't said that to your kid? And it wasn't like she was hitting them Nothing. or saying something derogatory nope. about their character or At all. something. No. It was just, please respect me. Please listen to me. I'm your mother. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm sorry. What a horrible person. So there we go. Uh, okay. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City trailer came out. It is got a lot going on. I did get chills. I did too. I did call bullshit. I mm. did get excited. And I did say bravo to the editors. Of this production company, because this is a good-ass trailer. This is a good-ass trailer, okay? <laughs> it has everything we want in Salt Lake City. I mean, I don't know. I don't. You, I, we, we are huge Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City is number one. Salt Lake City is number one. I'm sorry. Ever, you, I'm sorry. Okay, you could, if you haven't watched it, you can watch it right now and then hear us talk about it. But we're, let's go through what we saw. Please, please. Okay. Heather Gay, what who happened? is the Mormon who has left Mormonism, she has a big black guy. He, uh, no, I mean, that thing is I big. 100% predict, believe she slipped on some black ice. And we're going to make something bigger out of this. I don't think she's dating a guy who mm-hmm. beat her up after a, a, a meth-filled night. Okay, so I don't think that's her storyline. Yeah. And I think she's going to, you know, roll with it. It's like what I took off my glasses when I fall on my head. It's pretty shocking, but it's shocking. a good scene. Good scene. Good scene. Very good, because it did. I did wonder if maybe one of her family members might have punched her, but mm. maybe not. So uh, maybe she just fell. I was predicting no. A dick. Um, <laughs> that would be good. Because she 
I mean, I'm just saying. She's you never at, know. She said she's out for some. We she see, wants to. We we see them getting wearing sexy outfits, which is another thing housewives always do. Love it. Uh, they always have a night of straight uh, 50 year old women. Yes. Um, go on a trip, and they say, "Let's do an S and M party." That's right. Let's wear G-strings. sex toy party. Let's all show our tits in the pool yes. or twerk. Male stripper I know night. I've done that many times many with times. my friends from um, the mom club. Of course, everybody, everyone that goes on a vacation for a 50th birthday is yes. like. Bring uh, several sex costumes. Of course. And then we're just going to, um, you know, put act your tits weird. out to the point where you do, the nip almost comes out yeah. in the dress. Almost, but not, but then one will pop out. Yeah. Also, you have to get together in the pool with the titty out to plan your charity event. Yes. So you have your charity event titty night. And then, of course, <laughs> we're going to do charity event titty night male stripper club. This one, the girls are twerking. So they're like, so many other franchi- franchises have already shown their tits. Yeah. So we're going to have a twerking are moment. Are we going to do ass stuff? Yeah, we just saw that. You didn't just You're right. miss I, that Yes, I, did. I didn't miss it. Okay, another thing we <laughs> see is the Lisa Barlow son. Um, they'd practiced a scene before yep. where they said, we're going to talk about, we're going to do basketball, and then you're going to say you're not sure if you want to go to college. Yes. Um, I hope he doesn't plan on majoring in theater in college if he goes, because he's not a good actor. And uh, mm-hmm. Lisa Barlow, I like your tequila, but this was such a fake planned out storyline. Like, I don't know if my kid's going to go to college or not. Right. Which a lot of they people deal something. with it. But, okay. you know, you got to come up with something fresh. I mean, I don't... I. Love Lisa Barlow. I love her. So Thank I, you. I know. I love you so much. I love that for you. I love you for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about you for me. Oh, and the Suns and Fresh Wolf. I own Fresh Wolf. I have Fresh Wolf. I use That's the body the, wash. The boys' uh, hair products and stuff, right? I use the body wash. Yeah. I do. I'm not even ashamed of I it. Like it smells the, good. I like the Vita Tequila. The other storyline that we see that's going to happen is that Meredith Marks says that. Oh, you abuse um, my family. I've heard that um, <laughs> uh, Lisa Barlow does favors to get her alcohol in restaurants. Just and then the Whitney. Uh, exaggerates it and says, I heard you do like sexual favors to get your right, tequila. Right. And she's like, what? There's no way Lisa Barlow no. is blowing Absolutely not. the bartender no. of whatever, the Aspen Inn. Absolutely not. <laughs> she's not going to the Aspen Inn and Or the Park, or the Park, City, Park City Dive Bar to get her Vita tequila in there. If anything, they're blowing her. Okay? Exactly. Lisa Barlow is the boss. Period. Um, Meredith Marks, no sign of Brooks. Wonder why. Wonder why. Why? I mean, has it? Has I that mean, story? I, I don't, I don't want that storyline. Be offensive, but has that storyline? I think the storyline's over. Okay, so and now I think the new storyline over. The new storyline with her is she's taking a bathtub with her husband, she, and I'm <laughs> like, uh, stop copying Tamara and Eddie. Okay. They did the bathtub first. Uh-huh. That's what must be frustrating for Tamara when they when they copy her when they caught when they told her to leave for a year Horrible. and then fucking like stole all of her bits. Of course, they all do it. <laughs> they all stole all of her bits. And she Meredith is trying. I mean, l- listen. I don't. I they. I I commend anyone on a housewives show for trying to get their storyline in any way. I get it. It's hard. You've got to reach for the stars. However... Or the shit. Or the shit or the taint or whatever you're doing in the tub, okay? I mean, her toe is in his taint. I don't know why. Ugh. One does what one does. But the two of them, to me, yes. are just thirst clown clowns. Meredith and her husband. Thirst clowns. Yeah. Thirst clowns. Get a bucket Fill it with water. There's a hole in it because the water's coming out because it's never enough. The two of them are next level thirst. I agree. Totally agree. Um, then Whitney Rose, she shares with her husband mm. about her childhood, which I'd be honestly shocked if she never shared about it bef- till now. But if this is something that you haven't shared on the show for the first three seasons, and it sounds like something tragic happened, like mm-hmm. she was molested or physically abused or something in childhood. Yeah. And I actually never have a problem with someone revealing that on the show. It brings, it makes other people maybe tell their yeah, spouse or totally. get therapy or whatever. Mm-hmm. We don't know what that is, but mm-hmm. she's get, that's what she's going to be dealing with. And then, um, of course, we have the biggest, juiciest stuff is the whole Jen Shaw stuff. And is she... <sighs> Oh, here I have these photos. I forgot. Here's the wait. Here's Heather's black eye. I mean, here they are twerking. Jesus. Here's Whitney talking. Oh, Who's there's, that? There's a new girl on who I don't know what her ethnic background is, but she looks 
some Asian, Polynesian something. Mm -hmm. So she is there. And the thing about her is you can't see it in this photo that much, but she has allowed some of the front of her hair to go gray. Okay. So it's a double diversity because oh, we've never, we have never had a gray haired housewife before. Wow. She's putting, now wow. the bad news right. is, is, you know, who's not going to tap her for a sponsorship? Madison Reed. <laughs> who I love Madison Reed to touch up my roots because I get gray hair, but I'm not letting these grow out. Mm-hmm. Even if Bravo wants to put me on a show, even if Bravo was like, let your grays yeah, grow out, Heather, how- and you can be the one gray haired housewife uh-huh. in Beverly Hills, I'd say, nope. Not doing it. For no amount of money. No. But this girl, <laughs> she was like, let me let my gray hair stand out. So okay. she's in there and she's talking to Jed and she go, she's giving her shit and she's like, better be nice to me or you won't get money on your books when you go to prison. <gasps> so then we see Jed oh. Shaw say it was Stu, mm-hmm. my assistant Stu, mm-hmm. Stu mm-hmm. who threw me under the bus and got me into this. And then we see her <sighs> pleading and we see a Meredith Mark's husband asking Meredith and Heather Gay, have you ever really asked her if she was innocent or guilty? Mm-hmm. Now we know she has pled guilty. She has. She and has. I think she's getting sentenced like after the holiday sometime. She did go from what would have been a 30 to 35 year sentence down to an 11 year maximum. Yes. Had she not had she had she not pled guilty, she would have gotten 30 plus. Pleading guilty gives her a maximum of 11. Right. Which so one less. does, yeah, and then so one does think, what exact? It's so convoluted. I've given I just, my prediction. I think sad. she's going to end up doing like four or five. Yeah, that makes sense. And that makes um, sense. and she'll come out with gray hair and a book. I mean, and she will. Yes, yeah, exactly. But, but I mean, that's not a Teresa Judice one year where they wait for you. The li- the world is going to go if you're gone that long. That's a long You're time. You're not going to be talked about on Housewives no. Salt Lake anymore. You are going to be forgotten. But in four or five years, you're going to pop out with a book you don't, and a movie deal, maybe? Mm. I don't know. She's pretty exciting to watch. So we'll I see. feel like we, she might be That's able to come prediction. with a Anna Delvey style. Definitely a book, but I don't know. So anyway, I think it'll be an exciting thing to watch. Dubai Can't was wait. very dull. Very dull. I didn't watch Dubai. I'm going to tell you why. I don't, I'm not going to watch anything Dubai. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why don't you let women drive? Then maybe I'll watch Dubai. I'm not dealing with Dubai. I, I totally. F Dubai. Yeah. I <laughs> I agree. And I. Bravo should be the shame of the I just couldn't get into it. I don't blame you. It was boring fake, and I had fake, the same fake. thing Bullshit. as you. But, um, okay. So now let's talk. Oh, this was also juicy. Jen Shaw posted this on her stories. Mm. Let's play who did that? <gasps> Real House on yes. Salt Lake Edition. <laughs> One, donated to Ted Cruz for president <laughs> campaign four times. Two, said there are different types of black people. For example, black people from Compton are different from black people from Salt Lake City. Note, my husband is from Compton. Aye, Three, aye. said, oh my God, you look just like Moana from the Disney movie. <laughs> Your people have the coolest hair. Can I catch it? Four, told me I should not talk about my mental health on the show or say I use medication for my depression because it will be used against me. Five, called my son the N-word. Now, Mm. a lot of people thought she was talking about Lisa Barlow. What? Really? Your favorite, yeah. That's who people think she's talking about, but she doesn't say who she's talking about. I know, we think we know who she's talking about. But however, here, here's a little thing that just came to me. She could just be talking about a producer. True. It, that is said, true. Play who did that on the Real House of the Salt Lake edition? It could have been also Mary Crosby, who's no longer on the show. That's who I thought it, it was. Or it could be a producer. But mm. people thought it was. It was. I Lisa never would Barlow. think that was Lisa Barlow. I would never think that was you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My darling. Thank you. Here's some Vita tequila. <laughs> so pretty juicy. All right. This is new. Oh. Uh, Erica J. News. Okay. So page six is reporting that Erica Jane scored a major win in court this week with a five million fraud lawsuit to her ex-husband Tom Girardi's former colleagues. Basically, I'm going to tell you what happened. Ron Richards, who is the seventh health wife, okay, that he's this attorney. <laughs> he represented two attorneys that were co-counsel on cases with Tom Girardi in which, okay. along with the victims not getting the money that was received. Tom took it all. Ugh. They didn't get what they were to receive uh, as okay. co-counsel. Okay. So then they sued Erica under the pretense of, you knew about this, so therefore um, 
you owe us. Well, Jeez. I always thought it would be very, very hard to prove that she, I think we've always talked about, did she know? How much did she know? Uh -huh. Did she think something wasn't going right, but she was like, la, 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 and took her credit card and had fun? Is she the smartest woman in the world? Is she the dumbest woman in the world? It lies somewhere in between. Anyway, <laughs> it was thrown out, which I think, I don't know if this was a publicity stunt for Ron Richards, but also when you're, I could see why it it was, um, Wait, was it thrown out? Or she won. She just won that it was, I guess that means it was thrown out. So she doesn't out. need to pay. She doesn't need to pay. But I think when you're thinking about it and you're looking at like, okay, what about all the attorneys and all the attorneys in the Bar Association mm. that knew that he was running his law yeah. firm Come on. not properly? Mm. Where are all those people? Why exactly. aren't they being dragged responsible? Agreed. So, you know, I I think there's a lot of things about Erica Jane that I don't think she's handled this whole thing right. But I, I mean, I don't think... I don't think I would side with the judge on this one, too. Like, there's, too. you know, like, and then, you know, oh, boo hoo, like to the two attorneys. I just don't think it's a compelling case. And so she's happy. She's very happy Good. today. Mm -hmm. She also posted from the L.A. Times, Pretty Mace posted a judge, a judge's affair with Tom Girardi, a beachfront condo and a three hundred thousand dollar wire from his firm. Oof. This talks about how he bought. A and I, I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing, but it's it talks about how, you know, he bought a condo for a mistress. So now is that is that condo no longer that mistress's home anymore? Oh. Just like the diamond earrings Oof. are no longer Erica's diamond earrings anymore because they if they could directly show that it came from the escrow account of the millions of dollars of a client one that he then did not give them, mm -hmm. like. But then it's that's where it goes. Like, how far do you go? You know, like, what about uh, political donations? What about mm. charitable donations? What right. about you built a wing at Loyola Marymount Law School? Do they now have to somehow give that money back? Like, how far does it go with gifts that came from Tom Girardi? And if she has to give back the earrings, should the mistress give back the place? Should Loyola Marymount Law School give back something? I mean, if one has to do it, then they all have to do it, I would think. I mean, I mean, they got to collect this money. They got to collect the money. And if you're doing it for one, it can't, one can't be good. One's not good if it's not good for the other, I wouldn't think. Like, yeah. you can't be taking somebody's home away. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I just, yeah, I think that if you're going to do one, do it all. It all sucks. There's but no she's saying, good. But it all sucks. Erica, I guess, is also saying, I didn't even know about this condo. Which Agreed. she might not have known. Why would she know? Babe, did you get your uh, condo for <laughs> your mistress? Tell her. <laughs> Tell her I found a cute couch over on La Brea. Like, come on. I believe she didn't know a lot. I mean, when she we probably met, knew that he wasn't the greatest husband anymore. I didn't think give she a knew shit that. And, and was like, yeah. you go off with your mistress. Yes, right. And I don't care what the hell you do because you spending money on her is not affecting at all yes, my life. Agreed. I still have access to everything I want. Yeah. And I get on the private plane, mm -hmm. which she shouldn't have been using that either. But mm -hmm. got on the private plane with my gaze, uh -huh. my one straight that I get to bone after the show. <laughs> uh -huh. And I go have my fun. And you can go have your boring dinner mm -hmm. at Morton's with your <laughs> mistress. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anyone on the planet unless they knew and unless they really saw how somebody does business. Right. Who would really think that that person would do what he did? Do you know what I mean? They didn't. I, I, I mean, don't think she knew any of that. I don't think she knew. So if she knew, I don't think she, I don't think a person could comprehend my husband is stealing money. From these people and not giving them the money. I, mean, I don't think she knew that. It's a Ponzi scheme. So then if you think about every male crook out there is every... And now I'm like, it sounds like I'm defending Erica. But I mean, I, I do think there's... I said this with um, Kimberly Archer, who was on my show. Like, maybe it wasn't legally right. But you can still not agree with how she's handled this stuff morally. Well, but yes, still... Fine. And she certainly benefited more than anybody yes. from this. However... Like, are you to look at every white collar criminal that's in the prisons right now and blame their wife? You're, you can't. You know, <laughs> you it's just like, can't. yeah, I don't even think Bernie Madoff's wife knew. No, I don't. And, and yeah. I just don't think and we she don't understood. even know if the sons working there really knew. They didn't know. Well, according to the one, movie. And then one killed himself. <laughs> and the other died of cancer. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just I agree with you. OK, so. You know, do you know what's going on with uh, Lisa Renna? It's just a lot is happening. I know what I, I mean. I think I know with bots and the thing and Diana and all okay, that. Okay, good. So then I can just because I've explained it. So the yes. latest is she she did post this you know thing from Bravo like please stop harassing oh, yeah. yes. our you know uh -huh. 
And then she removed it. And everyone's like, why did you remove it? And she goes, you know what? I've removed all the housewives, negative stuff from my Instagram. I want to keep it just to dancing in free people outfits in a bucket hat, (laughs) hairy gardening, (laughs) and like my lipstick. Uh And I even took my housewife bio thing off. And everyone's like, wait a minute. Does this mean that she possibly is leaving? And um, I, I, I think she's doing a smart thing in that... I think she feels there might be a chance she may not be asked back. Mm. So in anticipation of it, it'll be like, I I plan on leaving anyway, or I don't give a fuck. As you see, I've already removed it. I don't need it. And she says, you know what? I was Lisa fucking Rinna before Housewives, and I'll be Lisa fucking Rinna after. Which is Denise Richards' line. No. Denise Richards said that in a... Somewhere, either oh. on the show or in a tweet, or I don't know, but she said it. Anyway, that's what I think is going on. What well, do you that think? does make sense. I mean, people, I went online, even though the show wasn't on last week and it was so annoying because I wanted to. We wanted to watch it and then go on social media, and it's like it's blowing up, and people are so mad at her and mad at her and Lisa Rinna, Lisa Rinna, Lisa Rinna, Lisa Rinna, and then the bots and the thing, and God damn. So it does. We seem still don't like know who hired the bots. We don't. It could have been. But the, this, but what's interesting, you know. what, what mm. is interesting is apparently, you know, this hasn't happened, you know, and all, but also, you know, social media changes every year. The only thing that's different about this season mm-hmm. with this is lick, lick, well, lipping, li- lick, 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 lip Diana. <laughs> yes. And people are thinking that she hired the boss. A lot of people think she did. So. I want to say, when I first heard about Diana, mm-hmm. about things about her, mm-hmm. I said, the rumors that I have read, and I said the Sunday Scoop, are so bad that I will not repeat it because this woman fucking scares me. Ooh. And I've been sued before, and oh. I'm not even... But you go look it up. Okay. Well, <laughs> because she has now sent, sent cease <gasps> and desist letters to Gawker... Um, the heavy wow, uh, wow, anti lawyer wow, and uh, Damn. and she posted them all. She sent them. She she's doesn't like, give I'm a flying done. fuck. Yeah, she's like, I'm done. That's with how this. rich she is. And um, this is mm. not appropriate journalism in Power, her mind. Man. Wow. And I'm going after you. Wow. Now this this doesn't mean they're all going to be sued, but it means like shut the fuck up. I suggest that is so slightly we'll see. Uh, exciting. So, um, <laughs> but. So far, I don't see my name on this. I haven't been. <laughs> but look, I, you know, there was really nasty things, crazy things said about her that right. she did deny that she actually brought okay. up on the show. Mm-hmm. She like her. She wrote this book or in, a photography book called Room, Room 204 or whatever. 23 or, or I don't 23, know. That's right. That was like all her friends that she's done charity stuff right. with that were actors. Well, Lisa Ray is in it. That would be like semi-naked. Mm-hmm. And people said this book is really about a... Um, about hookers and their clients. Oh. And I was like, that makes no sense. I, no, I remember makes I was like, no I, that light, like really doesn't make any sense. So then she was like, I don't want to talk about my book anymore because it brought this like awful story that was right. So listen, you can like dislike her as, yes. and you could say she's boring and you could say, I don't like Asher's hat or his singing or his personality or I, I his mean, gold I, digging. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what she's going to do with this. I would be shocked if she chose to come back. I don't think she will be asked to be back. Right. I just don't think she really clicked with any of the audience or with any other members. Like she wasn't like like rolling on the ground laughing with anybody. Like there's yeah. nothing. You're right. There's there just wasn't. not. There, there was a lot of unrelatable. Once we got into like, I don't know how to go into a store. You're like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to watch you. you yeah, know what I, mean? I just I want to like, like you. But you just literally said to everyone, you don't know how to go into a store. And then there were times where she would like go after like Garcelle or something. And I'd be like, did I miss? Like I'd literally go back and I'd be like, did I miss something? Like, is this just a fake fight? Like it felt very weird and like just not a gelling situation. So then, but this other thing was interesting is that um, this, uh, someone on Juicy Scoop Obsessed, my group on Facebook, which is private. You have to listen to the show to get in it. But anyway... (laughs) Said that um, at one point, because her her Twitter uh, Diana is is um, Sanella Sanelia Diana Jenkins is a real name, I guess. So it's mm. S D J N E U R O is her you know thing on social media. So proud of Kyle Richards and the movie. It was a great movie. And then 
someone noticed that it had disappeared because they said this tweet is from a suspended account. So at one time, her inst- her Twitter was suspended, which is weird. Oh. But – Well, maybe yeah. also somebody was doing something to infiltrate her Twitter. Yeah. I mean, you never know. I mean, have you ever had your Instagram or your Twitter hacked? I have, and it's annoying. And then they pretend they're you and – No, I've never had that. your life. Yeah. And then Instagram won't verify you. Well, they'll vote for you, but uh, I can't get verified. So then they pretend that it's all fine. Anyone on Instagram can just go ahead and do whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, it's a nightmare. What, so, what, that is terrible. No, nightmare. I'm lucky enough to ha- not have that. Oh, oh, so her so Twitter is been, still deactivated. She could have been. Ha- you never know. So she Who may, knows? But she may have strong hard gone after someone that she felt she might have was violating her, and then in that they reported it to Twitter, and that, then they took it down. And be. there's like certain words and certain things that you just cannot talk about, and <sighs> whatever. That could very well be. God damn. Here's another person that um, you have now a direct contact with. <laughs> this just came out <laughs> yesterday, and this is um, on uh, Us Weekly. Us News. Um, Jeff Garland's character from the Goldbergs has been killed off after onset investigation season 10 details. Bye, Ashy. <laughs> Goodbye. Now, See you later. For some of those Goodbye. of you who have only been listening to Juicy <laughs> Scoop maybe the last four years, mm-hmm. one of the first times I had you on the show, yes. you told a fabulous story <laughs> mm-hmm. about the fact that Jeff Garland is not a great person. No. So this news was not a surprise to me. Uh-uh. To loyal juicy scoopers, no. or to you, no, that he was a dick. That in this article, it says he used the word vagina on the set in a rude way, and the person who I don't know if she worked on the show or she was like a guest star or something, she complained about it, and he was like, "I don't give a fuck," and he yes. was rude and awful. He's such an asshole. And the thing with him is the 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 manipulative genius of his shittiness. Yeah, is that he. I never watched him be overt as in overt, like, grabby or rapey or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But his sexual harassment comes from his manipulation with his comedy. And so by using, like, oh, my vagina hurts or whatever he oh. was doing loudly with his, he's a big guy, too. Right. And intimidating to women and making it so that – and I did watch him be aggressive with a girl who wasn't his wife – And in a day where he didn't have a scene and he just needed to come on set and it was just like, okay. Oh, so you did, what, I, okay, I remember you did stand up with him. I did stand up and I did Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, so this is a Curb Your Enthusiasm. So at Curb, there was a thing at stand up too. But then at Curb, um, he was so obnoxious and didn't need to be there. He did not need to be there to the point where, and I, you know, I watched him literally, and again, I'll say this just very quickly. Larry David, professional, couldn't have been nicer, um, normal human being, whatever. This guy's stomping around, making noise, being loud. No reason. He didn't have a scene that day. He just showed up because he needed attention. Talk about a thirst bucket, thirst clown, thirst bucket, thirst clown. He then came in and made it. So the so I played a lesbian, obviously, and I'm with this girl who's like my fiance or my wife or something. He gets into a thing with her where he doesn't leave her alone to the point where he offers her a ride back to base camp in his Tesla. And it's like, we all have a ride, sir. She don't need no ride. And he's like that. It's like, it's not overt. It isn't, it's not like, hey, baby, it's, it's a thing where, yeah, where you're like, where you know you're what? uncomfortable because he, he's the star of the show. You're a guest star. He's powerful in Hollywood. You're yeah. trying to be polite. But it's really making you uncomfortable. It, yes. And you and you're trying to work and get into his character, which right. is also really rude to do to someone. He's so rude. And then so for to hear the stuff on the Goldbergs where it was like he's yelling this and my vagina hurts and where it's like okay. And he'd sleep a lot. He would sleep a lot. Yeah, he'd like sleep in that chair. Oh my god. He's and just like, such like an they, entitled they literally had piece to do everything around him. It it's just I'm so glad the show's can continuing because good, I knew should, yeah, this news came out before 
But no, it's going to because I was like, I mean, I love Wendy who plays, and she's been on the show a couple times. Oh, yeah. and I was on Rio 911 with her. And I'm like, I think the show is great. And, and I'm she's like, amazing. And I'm like, I think it would be so fun to see her, da- the character, Beverly, like, oh, date. Oh, yeah. And have the kids' reaction. Yeah. And like, and like become like a real estate agent or something. Yes. Like, what a mom would do in the 80s That's if, if she was suddenly single. Mm-hmm. And like, I just think there's so much more that can be had. And I think they're going to even, I think the show's going to have like a great resurgence without yeah. him. Good. Good. It's just that's that that's creeper like sleeper kind of guy who on a in a work environment who he shouldn't he it, it I'm glad that they fired okay, him. What's this? What is the stand up story about Jeff? The stand up thing is that I was he was cl- he was headlining this night I was doing. Basically, the short of the long of it is I went up. I thought I had a great time feeling good about myself. And he goes on after me and calls me a hack. In front of everybody. In front of how the How audience. did he say it? He said, she's a hack. Like, literally, it was like that. Like, he got something. It was a hack joke. It was, she's a hack. What a hack with the hack joke or something like that. That was the first thing he says, basically? Was when the second he got on stage, because I he, he was right after me, he was like, hack joke, she's a hack, whatever, and then went off on me. I, and, I, and I was, when I tell you... <laughs> um, it was like being shot in the head. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I have never in my life, and in, in stand-up, we've been undermined a million times. Yeah. A guy goes up there, talks about fucking whatever the fuck, and I, and certainly I'm up there talking about, and I am what I am. I'm not, you know, lezzing out, doing my thing, having fun. Everyone's having fun. This was, and he, he just destroyed me. And 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 it wasn't a normal undermining. It wasn't like women, right? It wasn't like that. It was I'm a hack. Did you say anything to him after? No, 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 no. But I got good and drunk with the other comic there, and Brandy was there too. But when I tell you, I probably think about it every day since. <laughs> like I remember, it's when you- humiliating to for somebody to go up who's a star. To call you a hack, which is the worst thing to be called as a comedian on the planet, and I don't think I'm a hack. No. So that was, it was, I, I, I just will never forget it. And I remember life. when you did the show, a Mike Juicy Scoop show, and you told it, and you're like, I don't give a fuck. I will burn <laughs> this bridge. I will burn this to bridge. The scra- and I was like, I respect that. <laughs> And I have done it with many people as well on this show, and it's fucking freeing and great. It's freeing. And then you have a moment like this, and you're like, like told you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, thank you. And, th- and thank you. Yeah. And good for Wendy McClub. Wendy. Wendy. I just go Wendy because Wendy. it's such a long name. She's too talented and does and deserves better for to and have to deal show. with. And, yeah. To yeah. go and, and move on. And who knows what's going to happen with him and Curb and whatever. But it's just like, you know what? This is this is your karma, and the guy ran for a SAG um, officer, and this is where I, lo- I lost my mind, and I did, and again, and I did call SAG, and I was like, "How? F- what is wrong with you?" They literally on a platform of we're going to work to stop sexual harassment on set. He was running, and I think he might actually have won. I can't remember to be like on the board, like a high up board. I was like, "You have got to be. Are you fucking kidding me right now? You're gonna have this wolf be have anything to do." With sexual harassment on a set, I will. This is what makes people lose their minds. This is what yeah. makes people go crazy. I mean, anything, but well, just, good. Um, anyway, glad that the story's out. Now, I didn't discuss this. You um, <laughs> have a history with Vanderpump. Rules. Yes. At one time, you hosted the show oh, the, after, after show. Vanderpump. Mm-hmm. As you know, Katie and uh, Tom Schwartz had got married. Yep. They realized they weren't really married. So then there was a whole other season of <laughs> okay. them getting remarried, getting married again. Like they never like turned in their paperwork. They were really married, but hey, then they hey. decided to get divorced. Okay. And they since are completed the divorce and are living separately. All right. And they went to Sheena Shea's second wedding with Brock and mm. their little cute baby. Cute and baby. And they all went and something happened. We don't, we're hearing all different things, but the main thing that happened was that, um, that I don't have a photo of her, but that Raquel, who's very pretty, mm-hmm. and she was she came on the show as DJ James Kennedy's girlfriend. <laughs> they got engaged and they broke up at the re- they announced their breakup at the uh-huh. reunion. Mm-hmm. Stories confirmed that they okay. got together. I don't know if they fully both. Oh. I don't know if he went to second base. Oh, 
Uh, they made out. They definitely hooked up. <laughs> he went over up. the shirt. And over so the, the pants. question is now there's reports that Katie was disinvited to the wedding. So I don't know, but oh. she was there in Mexico. So the this the point is people watch Vanderpump Rules because we're going to see it all. The wedding was wow. filmed. Something happened where either she threw a fit, she either knew that they hooked up and did mm. something to make it be like either I am not coming to the wedding now or Sheena being like this is too much drama. Wow. Why don't you sit the wedding out right. because I don't want we don't know, but it's going to be a reality show wedding. Well, good like for, we ask for. And you know what? Sheena Shea is really one of the nicest people we've ever met. She I really mean, is. She really is one of the sweetest, nicest people. <laughs> yeah. And she was, I remember years ago when we were dealing with the show and dealing with them, and she got scared because she wasn't going to have a storyline, whatever. And I'm so happy for her. She deserves this. She deserves a good storyline on the show. Yeah. If real or not, I don't care. She She's happy beautiful. with this she guy. She beautiful at the wedding. She's a gorgeous baby. The baby is so cute. So good for her. Good yeah. for them. So happy for her. And, you know, I and, hope that it all... And, Turns out good for her. Uh, and I will be watching. Okay. This was kind of... Okay, we oh. know about the Teresa... You know about the <laughs> Teresa... Look at that. Look at this photo. We know about <laughs> Teresa's wedding, obviously. <laughs> Teresa at New Jersey. <laughs> Page I mean, six is so mean. They did the ugliest photo of uh, Ramona. But anyway, Ramona, uh, as you know, got invited to Teresa's wedding. They met and hung out over the years, but also did the ultimate girls trip. Mm -hmm. She put on her Instagram story that she um, got invited to the wedding and then it came out. Oh my God, now it's out there. Now I have to hire an extra security, whatever. She didn't get disinvited. That's it. But she didn't go. So oh. Teresa was doing something with, I think, Dorinda and I want to say Dolores, like a Mohegan Sun Q&A thing. Okay. And someone filmed it and released it and they asked her about it. And Teresa said, you know, I called Ramona and I had to get her number. And I was like, Ramona, what are you doing? She's like, oh, my God. You know, so then Ramona removed it. She absolutely was never disinvited. She was invited. But she didn't go. And hmm. um, I kind of found... I knew that she was planning on going and basically decided like the day before called her, her companion that she was going to go with who I know oh. and said, um, no, I'm not going to go. I'm just not feeling great. So like, I don't know. It's cause she didn't have a date. You know, she's like, no, like, with some really hot guys. <laughs> okay. I was dating this really hot guy. He was going to come. And then actually his son got a little bit ill. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I don't really think I want to go the distance. I wasn't going to stay the night. And it's like, you know what? I don't have anyone. I don't want anyone to be upset about me. Cause I would still really feel bad with the invitation. Mm. Anyway, she didn't go. She probably was that. She probably didn't have a date. Right. It wasn't all going to be all about her. Right. She was like, I don't want to stand on my feet. I'm 63 years old. I don't want like a seven hour <laughs> night. And she didn't go. But I will say, that is shitty. Like, you did all this. Mm -hmm. You created all this mess. Yep. And then you still failed to go. And you cancel whether she got the money back from the kid or not. You canceled, like, a day or two before the thing. Not three weeks prior and going, yeah. oh, my God, I want to tell you. And, like, write a beautiful note and send a gift and be like, I won't be attending. No, in Ramona fashion, she was like, you know what? I was thinking about it. I don't really love the dress I bought, okay? Like, it was just, just like, I feel I'm a brat, and I don't feel like going, yeah. and I don't have a date, and I don't feel great about myself, and I have a zit, or whatever your case is. That is rude. Very that rude. That is so rude. I mean, Teresa, and of course, of all people to do that to, Teresa? I just wouldn't want to do that to her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's I mean, I will find never, you. I will never, ever miss a wedding situation, especially if I was invited and planning on it. Like, if it was a last minute thing, sometimes it's like, ugh, you know, not a wedding. Well, anything but like, can happen. So let's right. say, of course, life happens, whatever. But just, I don't feel like going. Well, I just don't think it was a great thing. Agreed. Leonardo DiCaprio has broken up with Camilla Marone. They were, she's some gorgeous model. They uh, broke up after more than it's, four years together. Okay. And, um, <laughs> How old was she? So he was 47, she was 25. So that means they met when she was 21, and he was 43, which is his age gap that he prefers. Right, he likes a 20, year yeah, or whatever. Uh, I just want to say this about him. Yeah. I think he's a great actor. I really enjoy watching him. Brandy told me a story about him. I don't know where she heard it. This is alleged. I don't know if this is true or not. Okay. But he's notorious for, obviously, for womanizing, whatever. He, on his, the yacht, whatever, he likes to have a woman blow him while he puts headphones on and s 
and listens to Juicy Scoop. And he <laughs> listens to Juicy Scoop. And he goes, oh, Heather, yeah. Ooh. Like, and like, like he's shoes them away. He's that disengaged. Yes. Yes. So and I've then, of course, re- signs the NDAs before you even all enter of the, the home. All that. Yeah, which I think a lot of people should probably do. But right. So I'm whenever I see him now. Also because most of the girls that are going to be blowing you probably have their own podcast. <laughs> they're probably listening. Uh, hopefully they have their own headphones on. But, like, <laughs> they're listening to their own, their own selves. And uh, But, yeah, like, that's now all I think about when I see him. Because I like him as an actor. Yeah. But I don't like thinking, like, that's how you're, tr- I mean, you're Mr. Climate with your Prius and girls are blowing you and you're putting headphones on. You're yeah. an asshole. How dare you? I, I want to f- show, show this tweet. Okay, Bob Vol, V V U L F L V wrote this. White smoke has emerged from the chimney atop North Hollywood <laughs> High School, signaling signa- signaling that Leonardo DiCaprio has chosen a new girlfriend. <laughs> I read mean, straight up like the Pope. That's funny. Hilarious! That's this funny. sent me that. My that friend. is funny. So, <clears throat> um, I have a prediction. Okay, of who I think I could see him dating. Oh, okay. He is always going to date someone in the 20s, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. But I think the next girlfriend will be someone uh, I want, like a single mom. Like a single oh. mom, like a Gigi Hadid. Oh. He's like, going to be a, like a stepdad? Just like, oh. he's always going to want something young and everything, but maybe he's getting more into the dad mode. Maybe he wants to try it out. Maybe he just wants something a little different. Mm, and of course, she's established. Gigi has her own money. Has her own money, you know, has a great mom and, and you That's know, true. has a great um, career. And I don't know. Something like that That's I could interesting. see happening. Uh, but it'll always be someone young and beautiful. It won't be like, a, it, he's not going to suddenly now at 47 date a 35 year old. Oh, that's just too old. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. No one should look at anyone under 30. Ugh. Yeah. So gross. Right. Horrendous. So that's my, God. that's what I think. So, I mean, but you know, she's okay. She's 25. She's still looking amazing. Um, <laughs> So this was really funny on Real Housewives oh, of um, of Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, she by Sheree. I love this season. <laughs> she by Sheree. Sh- Sheree, Sheree has come back to the show. She's dating a former uh, white collar criminal oh, felon. Okay, that then blew her off. But we're and she's finally getting her okay. joggers. Joggers. She by Sheree clothes. On the fashion show, mm. which the classic line from the fashion show years ago uh-huh. was, who was the guy that was like the one gay guy that was like uh, a, a tall, skinny. Yeah. And he was like rings. a fashion show with no fashions was the line. Yes. So they're like What's show the they're doing flashbacks of that. And yes. the fashion show is supposed to happen next week. Mm. And <gasps> that guy is there and it's amazing. And um, but she. No, no, not Miss Lawrence. He's 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 an older gentleman. He wears thin. big ties yeah, and cravats. And he's suits. making an appearance. So oh, right now thing. we're watching it, and she's struggling. She doesn't have all of her pieces still, and oh no, some of them are coming from Alaska. I don't know why Alaska, the hotbed, and of and then the other ones are clothes. coming from L.A. And I'm like, you live in Atlanta, you can't find a clothing <laughs> manufacturer. I mean, in Atlanta, at least it's American made. I know, but what, but at least if you're right, if you're not, if you're going to keep it in America, don't you think you could find I do something think you, closer? There's a sweatshop in L.A. that you could find. There's one, I'm sure, downtown. No, yeah, no, there is. She says she's getting it from L.A., but she's also getting some from Alaska. But I'm like, so, but there's nobody that could make these joggers in Atlanta. In Atlanta is what I'm I saying. But anyway, she doesn't know what she's doing clearly. And this girl Drew, who's pretty new, uh, she's yes. two years in. Mm-hmm. They were going to throw a birthday party for um, Kenya and Marlo, who hate each other, but they happen to both be Aquarius or something. So they're going to have a, a party for them. Yeah. And Drew got flower, got balloons and all this stuff. And she's like, Sheree, you know, since we're co-hosting this, your part is $1,300 or whatever. And Sheree was like, absolutely not. So it was collected uh, that... The the girl two girls started tweeting each other after the show, Drew and Sheree. Who owes the money? Who does it? And basically, they both decided they each have bad wigs, okay. and they've had bad hair days. Mm-hmm. And they say, "No, my wig is expensive." And the other one goes, "No, your wig is cheap, <laughs> just like your cheap joggers." Oh. And um, one has a husband, one doesn't. One dates someone in prison that doesn't even show up for them, and the other one's husband 
you know, dated and assisted or supposedly did. Mm -hmm. So they say all that on Twitter and it's pretty juicy. So there you go. Uh, They always in every Housewives. That's one thing. Also, the Housewives love doing. um, You are nothing if you don't have. A husband. Like, somehow, like, they always bring it back to that. Like, Ooh, you know, oh, well, I have a husband. Like, who cares? Okay, you know what was interesting in this season that I keep meaning to bring up? At one point, Candy and Marlo got into it. And Marlo, nobody oh. knows how she has her money. Uh-huh. But they all, she has never explained it either. But it sounds like she has kind of been a kept woman or something. Mm-hmm. She gets her stuff from gifts from mm-hmm. Tom Girardi. No, I don't know from where, but... <laughs> Um, so meanwhile, though, at one point they're fighting and she was criticizing the fact that Candy is essentially more essential, uh, essentially more successful and hard. makes more money than her husband. Uh-huh. And as if that's a diss, it's like, oh, would it have been better if I actually wasn't a successful songwriter and married a guy that made more than me? Like, literally, she that was her diss. Like, isn't that embarrassing that you mm. are so successful that you found a guy that also is successful in his own right, but you just happen to be more successful? Like, I'm like, how is that? And then Candy's like, bitch, I'm worldwide. And she's like, who are you? Like, you're a freaking hooker or whatever she called her. And she's All like, that. at least, you know, the men that I'm with, are richer than I am. I mean, it was the worst. So dumb. It was so dumb. Candy always wins. Now, and not, but, not for nothing, and just to put some context on yeah. Candy's husband, Todd, she he was like a like a line producer. Yeah. And so I know they always like to go back to that with him. Well, like, they act like you know he was I mean? like the janitor or I know. something. I'm like, he was <laughs> oh, in like a PA. major production, I and I they know, like I fell know. in love. I, and I, it, but I agree with you. It yeah. always goes somehow when you can't reach for anything else. It's... Well, at least my man, or at least your right. man. And that's yeah. all housewives. Right. At least I have a husband or my boy. It's like, yeah. why is that a litmus test for literally anything? Right. I could go get a husband. L- literally, if I wanted I agree. to. I like, agree. I could literally go get a husband. What does that mean? Nothing. At least I know how to keep a man, Julie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, I'm nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, know, it's so dumb. It's the worst comeback. I the mean, worst. worst. Anna Delvey, your friend, former's her oh, former friend yes. Rachel Williams, so who was the one who she stiffed the seventy thousand yes. dollar credit card yes. bill with in Morocco, yes. who sparked all of the Netflix shows and yes. all the things. Yep. She is suing Netflix. She is saying that they didn't depict her in a good light. All this other stuff that there was a point where. One of the other characters told her, like, you're abandoning Anna. You're not a good friend. I I read the original article okay. way back when mm. that Rachel wrote about it. Okay. And even though it was from her point of view mm-hmm. about her nightmare of how she got screwed over by this girl, mm-hmm. when I read it back then, I also thought, well, you were the freeloader. Exactly. I, I immediately thought, like, exactly. you... Were this girl's you friend? You were right there, bitch. You did not. You were right you there. You did not lay in bed and laugh for hours. You did not mm-hmm. absolutely adore her. You were happy to have a rich ass friend. That's right. Because other New York people had their rich ass friend, yep. and you were looking for a trust fund baby too. Mm-hmm. And when she said come on the trip, since she'd picked up all these meals, you decided to come on the trip. Yep. She de- definitely screwed you over, and definitely yes. didn't tell you I'm screwing you over, and definitely ran you around thinking you were going to get paid. Yes, I agree with all that. But that's the only thing that the Netflix kind of highlighted was like you were the one that was looking for a friend to pick up the bill. You were there, bitch. Yeah. You were there. No one forced you there. No one forced you there, bitch. No one forced you there. You were there. That This happened because of you. Now, I'm not saying you can't learn from it. You can't grow from it. You can't change yeah. from it. You can't. You look at that and you go, I'm horrified of myself. That's what you should be doing. Send yourself a cease and desist letter and in the mirror, go to yourself. I will never and she, be like that person again. She got a book out of it. Then she also had I mean, a, she also got an HBO deal out of it. Well, then they decided to not to go forward it, probably because Netflix did this and they felt they killed it. There's nothing we don't need to right. beat this dead horse. And oftentimes they do that with a lot of things. Where five <sighs> things from five different streamers right. all do the same thing, mm-hmm. but this they were like, we're good on this. She's still in ice doing podcast interviews from ice Anna <laughs> Delvey yeah. and um and and coloring or something. She's making wonderful artwork. Yes, doing and, her life and yeah. um. Yeah, so this girl I don't think is going to win. Good, you should win. But basically the lawsuit says, like, you, like when I wrote my books and stuff about guys I dated or whatever, uh-huh. and I've text, you, 
the publishers and, and in writing, you have to change a f- enough things. So you have to, mm. but this was based on a true story. So I'm like, I don't think they did anything wrong. But like, if I was going to do right. a show and I was going to do someone about you, I would like not give you a J name. I would make you from like a different city. Right. And right, have right. you have some other kind of career, but still the essence of you mm-hmm. could still be a friend in my life. Right. Like, mm-hmm. but this, we know who you're talking about. Like, lady, look, it, at, at a certain point, it's not a documentary. If you want to make a documentary, then make the documentary and you can control it and how your narrative is put forth or whatever. Yeah. At the end of the day, writers wrote a script for a, based on a true story. And you know what? Even if you might not like it, that's how they saw you. You know what's kind of weird is that happens. in today's episode, um, I'm I'm Team America Jane and Team Anna Delvey. <laughs> Me too. I mean, the thing about it is that at the end of the day, you can say what you want about Anna Delvey, and it's horrendous and horrific, and she's a monster. But at the same time, she's being Anna Delvey. It's the other people are also monsters. You are a freeloading mooch, thirst bucket, <laughs> attention seeking fucking bitch. That's and right, Rachel. That's, and that's all. And that's all of them. <laughs> If I I did that, I when I get, you know, you have to take responsibility for you. This person and, and does wh- them. And whether you're the guest of a rich person at their home for dinner, whatever. Hey, my mom always said nothing's for free. That's that true. guy might grab That's your tip. True. That girl may screw you in Morocco and leave you with a with a credit card. Like if someone says, I'm going to take you on a trip. It's my treat. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I know my friend is richer than fuck. I would say have that serious conversation of like, I'd really love to go, you know, I, go through it. Like, so you're really covering everything. Okay. Right. Well, right. right. Please. I'm going to say up front, I want to take you to dinner this night. Right. Yes. I'm going to give you a gift. Yep. But like, yep. just to confirm, like, but, but that is what I guess she could have done that. And then they got there and then the credit card wasn't going through. So then she's like, just put your card down. Obviously, I'm good for it. So I understand all the trickery. No, I get it. And yeah. I don't think that what she did was right to her. What she did was wrong. What Anna Delvey is a grifter and a con artist and a yeah. criminal and a fucking don't go near her because right. obviously we're all going to get scooped up into her vortex and we're going to get had by her. Yeah. However, this person was right there. And yeah. unless you are coming to the table going... I was right there. I got screwed, and I want. And she deserves her money back. She should get paid back. Yes, because she was. She had been robbed. But she however, but st- you are depicted like that because you put it out there. You were like you, that. and you also you put it out there. You're you the, did it. You were the one who wrote the article in Vanity Fair, wrote yes. the book, and everything else. What, so. You didn't like this actress. She wasn't thin enough for you. She wasn't pretty enough for you. You didn't like the way she talked. You want to be. This is also again showing your ass. Yeah, your shitty ass. Is I what agree. This is showing. So good luck to you. Good luck to you. Um, okay, this was a big page six article that Kim Kardashian, um, she someone discovered that the trait. What do you call this bone again? The tra- the track track key, like the bone like between your between your shoulders and your neck. Yeah. Okay. They realized that she actually bothers to Photoshop that part of her body. Can you believe we've gotten to Wait, that what? point? She dipped it. Here's the next photo. So here is it normal where she's sipping a drink. This is just a... a this is a, normal. So this is the normal one. And then you dip it because it makes you look thinner and elongates your neck. So they photoshopped and someone discovered it based on the water or something. They figured it out. It's called a trapezius. Oh, oh, oh I see it now. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. It does kind of look better dipped in. <laughs> Whoever thought to do that? I mean, I don't even think – that's like a – really, the Kardashians are oh, always man. the forefathers Jesus of uh, photoshopping. Because I think people nip in their waist. They elongate their legs. They small in their nose. They yeah. fuller their lips. Right. They make their skin look prettier. But who thought to put dips in your, in your shoulders? Wow. So just when you think they've thought of it all, they think of something new. I mean, I, I – wow. Well. So okay. Chloe's so thin, and I just noticed uh, there's nothing like a vagina armpit. <laughs> I've I've seen my own vagina armpits. I'm sure I don't you think do. I have them as bad anymore because honestly, I, I think I got a little bit fatter. Mm. But when you are thin, uh-huh. and you you can have a real strong vagina, I mean, you oh, cannot that unsee had. that. That is, yeah, that's very anyway, vagina arm. I never would have even. This girl that. is the first. Uh, Finalist in a for, in the Beauty Queen con- competition. Sorry. She's uh, from uh, England, Miss mm-hmm. England. She um, 
is 20 years old. Her name's Melissa Ralph. She's a college student from South London. And she is the first to do a bare-faced look in a beauty pageant. Oh. She does not have one There's no speckle makeup on of there. makeup. Not a tinted moisturizer. Mm. Maybe she curled her lashes, but there's no mascara on it. Okay. There you go. I mean, I don't even... I, um, I, I don't, don't even think who cares about the story. She, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Um, this is a story that I talked about on my show that literally got... Not one person commented and nobody cared. And I found it such a juicy story. So what? I don't know anything about Horatio that. Sands, who you may or may not remember oh, from wow. his work on SNL. Yes. And what he did after that. Uh-huh. Um, oh, my God. I mean, I I listened to this whole article and read it and then, like, found this girl was very um, – was a fan of his – and it was like the days of him and Jimmy Fallon and Chris Parnell, mm-hmm. where people really didn't have like uh, Facebook groups or fan pages right. or anything. So some fans kind of started doing fan pages for them and this, where people could write in and say what they liked. You know, there was a time where people didn't, where they didn't wake up on Sunday and get to read all the comments about their work. Mm-hmm. They, so yeah, right, so right, this right. one girl like was in high school and she started it. I don't remember all of it. I'll just tell you what I remember. In doing it, like some people do. And I remember we became friends sometimes with our fans from Chelsea lately and they would come to a taping and they would like make us posters and just be like that. So this girl came and she started hanging out with Horatio and it actually, it totally became sexual and she was like Mm. violated and everything. And she was not 18. She was definitely under. (sighs) And then it became a weird relationship over the years where he still would reach out and she would still keep in touch with him because like a victim, you kind of want to try to rewrite the story in your head or normalize the fact. But Ugh. in it, she said SNL execs were there, uh, oh. NBC execs were there at these parties and Jimmy Fallon was there. And sometimes when she'd hang out in their office together in um, SNL and then at these parties after where people knew she was 16 and they saw them being physical and nobody said anything, stopped at nothing. So the latest is the uh, the accuser, this woman, she now claims that Jimmy Fallon and Lauren Michaels were enablers in a sex assault. So I guess, I don't know if she's suing or what, but the New York Post is reporting that, that they have been named. And I thought when I talked about this like a year ago, I said, I, I think the attorneys are going to make this happen because there's no money suing Horatio Sands. No. If you sue NBC and NBC is going to want to pay you to keep, to stop talking about Jimmy Fallon, who's the king of late night and all, and Lorne Michaels and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. But so I just, I don't know where it stands, but, but I'm telling you, this is a buried story. Nobody is is talking about it because people that have podcasts like me, Want to go on Jimmy Fallon? Of course. Do you think? But I'm never going on Jimmy Fallon. So I find this story really interesting. I totally believe this girl. I can totally see this happening, and I can totally see someone like Jimmy Fallon at the time, many years ago, being younger, having a friend that isn't as attractive as him, doesn't have the game with girls, right? Thinking that this girl is mature and pursuing him like a Lolita. Or not even thinking about it at all because he's a guy and he doesn't give a shit. Right. And he's like, what? Okay, that girl's there. Who cares? Like, like yep. I definitely don't think he was like, mm, Horatio. No. Like, But uh, did he sit around and he stop his friend? Did he tell someone, hey, I don't think this is good for Horatio? No. But I think a guy at SNL now that's 25 and in Jimmy Fall- Fallon's situation would absolutely do that. Because wow, the look. younger men have been educated in a way. Right. And I don't think these guys were. Yeah, so, I mean, but Lauren Michaels is, and yeah. always was, and I'm never going to be on SNL either. So it'll more Sorry, yeah. I'm <laughs> never going to be on SNL. So I would say that um, Lauren Michaels, I'm quite sure, it, I think it's believable too, and I think that Lauren Michaels knew full well what was going on. And clearly, I mean, now Jimmy of, Fallon, I could see being like, like you said, yeah. Who knows what this girl looks like? Maybe he didn't know whatever, however old she is, whatever. He's not paying attention. He doesn't care. Whatever. Yeah, it's a yeah. girl, female, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. But I'm quite sure Lauren Michaels knew, and I'm quite sure he made it so that it all would go away. 
Yeah. And I mean, look what Lauren Michaels has seen over 50, 45 I'm years. I'm quite sure he's seen quite a Between, few Between, you know, Chris Farley and hookers coming and <clears> drugs <throat> and this and that. Some... Some cast member possibly uh, oh, hanging sure. out with a 16-year-old fan yeah. at an after party it was like the least of what he's right. seen in 50 years. Right. I'm so, quite sure. Yeah. I can't, but I'm not su- surprised that it's not a bigger story. And maybe people it's are also... It's not a bigger story because people are afraid to report on it. Yeah. I mean, it is. Because of NBC. Yeah. Like, like, please. I probably wouldn't have reported on it 10 years ago. Because I people... probably still hope that I'd get on Jimmy Fallon's show, but I know right. I never will now, and I don't care. Do you think people have what? sexual assault fatigue? What do you mean? In stories, do you think that people have sexual assault and harassment fatigue? Like they're like, "Ugh, we're so sick of hearing about it." Oh, in general, there's because there's as, as so much who, of it. Be, as people write, you mean as writers, as, as writers, as the for it to not catch fire, they're like, "Ugh, this is in the, in the one. scheme of all this. This is um, nothing. Who cares? Absolutely. We're tired. You of know it. what? Where it also is, which is horrible, is like shootings. Yes. It's you just become, another day. You do, another, it's just another day. Another, it's just another gross thing that someone did yep. 30 years ago yep. that's completely repulsive now. Right, right. But like, right. yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And also he, Horatio Sands, who cares about Horatio Sands? who cares Sands? about Horatio Sands? If it was Jimmy Fallon that did right. it. It'd be more And the, the reason they're throwing Jimmy yeah. Fallon in there is because nobody cares. You're right. So they're like, at least, okay. Right. Um, I thought this was crazy. Um, okay, so... Pierce Bronson has a gorgeous wife that he's been married to forever. Yeah, like a long time. But over right? the years, people have made a big deal that she is not a size two or four. Okay, she's a curvy <sighs> brunette and she's stunning. And she, you know, where they met when she was a model. And Aww. anyway, but I thought this article was so weird the way it was written. Okay, proving to be the partner. This is from Unalad. I don't know what that... Unilad? Uh, Unilad, sorry. I don't know. Proving to be par- the partner we should all strive to be, Pierce Bronson clapped back and revealed it's not just the trolls who have been cruel to his wife. Addressing the body shamers, a 69-year-old actor wrote, Friends offered her surgery to reduce her weight, <laughs> but I strongly love every curve of her body. She's the most beautiful woman in my eyes and is also and also because she had our five children. Wow. I want to tell you, Pierce, not great. <laughs> Not a great line. She's the most beautiful woman in my eyes. Friends, <laughs> friends. It's like you are so eyes. beautiful to me. To nobody else me. thought. Nobody else thinks you're but beautiful. Only me. But I think you're beautiful. That Don't song's worry about not what they think. That song's not flattering. But also, <laughs> friends offered her surgery to reduce her weight. Friends, first of all, you're Pierce Bronson. Why can't you pay? To for her weight surgery, <laughs> friends had to it. offer. A friend had at a cocktail party was like Pierce. Let me so pay for your it. wife's uh, liposuction. Oh, God. And then you're like, you know what? Thanks for the offer. <laughs> I'm going to pass. But when this gets brought up, I'm going to tell you, remind everybody that I had the opportunity to get my wife free lipo. <laughs> and I said no because I'm that great of a husband. Or did they go to her and she was like, go fuck yourself. And he watched that happen. But just offered. Like, it's just so weird. What offered, maybe suggested, but offered like someone offered suggested, to pay for it. Also horrible. Like, hey, suggest- have you thought about. I think, su- but I think suggested <laughs> is like more believable than, than like, offering- let, like I'm, I'm hey. so grossed out by looking at the fact that he's thin and you're not. Yes. That it's, it's I'm horrendous. going to pay for your, it's beyond. I'm going to pay for your gastric or whatever. Or she's not even, the, she's just No, curvy. she's gorgeous. Like it's such, but I don't think he did great. No. Okay. I'm going to finish with a new segment on mm. Juicy Scoop. Okay. Juicy Scoop, TikTok news. <laughs> <laughs> I love the theme song. I love the theme song. I found this Juicy <coughs> Scoop TikTok news to be a really juicy story because it involves all social media. Okay. This girl named Roxy Styles, very attractive girl, I came across her in my For You page, and basically she, f- people would write her mean things, mm. uh, as everyone on TikTok does. <sighs> uh-huh. Oh, and... Somebody also, I want to say, so I saw this other girl that is on TikTok and Instagram, and she did a really funny um, little sketch about she'll do the same video on on reels on Instagram as she does on TikTok and how the, the comments change <laughs> and how the ones on Instagram are like, 
oh my God, girl, your house is so beautiful. You have such a creative side. And on TikTok, it's like, probably got that money out of her divorce and she never worked a day in her life. Oh, oh nice, nice that you don't have to work. Ugh. Are you a trust fund baby? Oh my God, I love your style. It's like the other one. It was hilarious. Right. Anyway, so this girl then shows how she goes to the commenter's Instagram page. Ooh. Sees what her <clears throat> husband's Instagram is. Then DMs him. Oh, no, you don't. And acts like she's hot for him. Nope. And then proves that the guy wants to cheat or send her nudes or whatever, and then exposes it in other TikTok videos. Wow. And to the girl. Wow. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm not. I'm not mad at it. You want to troll me? I will. <laughs> Sorry. You want to troll me? I will fuck your world. You yeah. know what I mean? Good. Yes. We're getting crazy today. It's too hot. I, I have I mean, no... Seriously, listen, don't you troll me? I have no problem with it, it either because I think you're a weirdo leaving a mean comment. If what? you don't like something, if you don't like... Scroll along. Don't follow that person. You don't have to say that Why? they're a piece of shit yes. or they're a slut yes. or whatever. Agreed, agreed. And, so, and then proving that, like, oh, I'm such a piece of slut. I'm such a piece of shit. A slut. Well, your, hus- your adorable husband that you brag about on social media... Wanted me to send him a picture of my, you know, tits. So, uh, like, yeah, I love vagina. it. I love it. I'm I'm here for so it. So beware and let her be, like, the vigil auntie or whatever. Yes, tro- she is. Like, tr- like, you want to troll? Vigilante. Be careful who you fucking troll. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You're and it's, get it. And, like, and, and, and point out, like, hypocritical, awful women. Yep. This is, okay, this is, this is pretty good. <laughs> this cat, he's big on Insta- on TikTok too. His name's Patty. Whoops, wait, I went wait, I went back. His name's Patty, and it's uh, the craziest conspiracy theories is basically his TikTok. And it, there's a conspiracy theory that Harry Styles is bald <laughs> and has been wearing a wig. Okay. And if you look at it, it's evidence like the Beyonce <clears throat> folding stomach. Okay. Like he's on stage and he like literally puts his hand behind his head and someone like caught it like go up. There's times one time it like blew up. There's times you see a tiny bit of glue. Like it's a really good wig. Oh. There's times where okay. a few years ago his hair was slicked back and you could see that it was receding like back to here and now it's not there and it's here. So he's balding. He's or got, no, or no, like it could be like he's bald and it's a wig. Oh. It's not like plugs. So it's That's not the a system. Conspiracy. It's like a full tube. It's a full. And yeah. he's got like the glue and the thing. And I mean, I get. I, I just a thought. Young man to I don't be know if it's true. I think it's kind of great. Well, all right. I mean. And then my last thing is horrible fashions. Fashion Nova <laughs> is now introducing <laughs> hip cleavage or hip. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, cutouts yeah, yeah, like yeah, a cat yeah. suit uh, so yeah. that's cutouts that go all the way down to your mid thigh. So it's and it's like being held uh, like across your belly button. So your whole hips and your waist are being seen. We've talked about butt cleavage. We've talked about side cleavage. We've talked about under boob cleavage. And under boob tit. It's, I mean, yeah, it, we've it's talked just, about FUPA. Oh, FUPA, yeah. Uh, show the FUPA. Why don't show you do the that FUPA. Next? Why don't you just they have already done it. That was last season. Full so, FUPA. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Open. Kim Kardashian has skims that only feature the FUPA. So it like pops up, your waist sneaks in, but then if you want to show off that FUPA, you can. It's horrible. And then Julia Fox, who's also friends with Anna Delvey, she went out with what do you call this where you have like a. <laughs> She's a she's a centaur. So she has a bikini top, which is turned on around backwards. She's very thin. She's very, very, very low pants. So she does sort of look horse like in her torso. And then, um, and then I don't know if someone's in it or if it's one of those costumes that, like that you can put on your dog almost, where it's like yes, all, like like then the feet just walk after you. But she's half horse, and she that went is out. absolutely. She I, is the thirstiest of the thirst. That's the thirst. That person cannot. That thirst. She cannot is be the thirst. Of the thir- that I'm person not, is just. Thirsty. I'm just going to end on this last story because it'll be too okay. old a news. A who twist? A Hooters waitress was caught dipping hot wings in her vagina. <laughs> she's a pretty Why? girl. She's Why? a pretty girl, but she said sometimes customers were mean to her. Oh, so she's, um, she's from okay. Houston, Texas, Texas, and mm-hmm. her name's Jessica Sinclair. She was taking the police custody after she was witnessed by coworkers <laughs> dipping hot wings into her vagina. Now, That's my first hurt. question was, when I first heard this story, logically, I was oh. like, no, I think she's taking the chicken wings before they've been dipped uh-huh. in the hot sauce and sticking them in the vagina. Because sure. otherwise, you wouldn't want the hot sauce in your vagina. No. She said that she did it in between 
or during her period or something, the period matters because if you do something with human blood with food, it's like a higher um, offense. Mm -hmm. um, they no way make it clear if they were dipped in hot sauce prior to the, or did, did she do it my way, which is the way I would suggest doing it. Before it dips, stick it in. Right, because you're not getting hot sauce in your vagina. Anyway. I can't even imagine. I can't even. I don't even. I don't think. How does that not hurt? That's got to hurt. All I can say is this girl's going to kill on Only, only fans. <laughs> you know she's doing Only fans, And she's hey going to be like, this was the greatest thing I ever to do. I used to make, you know, whatever, $200 a night selling hot wings Just, at a restaurant. Yeah. Now I'm making... Now I send the wings. Oh, it's in a plastic She's absolutely going to do OnlyFans with it. There'll be guys that will want this. Well, anything. And she can cook anything. Welcome to my kitchen. Hey, guys. Here we go. What are we going to cook today? We're going to do chick ch chicken fried steak in my pussy. Also, and then also, I noticed a lot of shows are like about like eating and talking and yes. stuff like you were saying. <clears throat> yes, and that's so, right. <laughs> and they con and that Hot right. Wings podcast is like a big hit that's been they were kind of the first people to do it. You know, when the guy would interview you but while you're eating oh, the, uh, how hot okay. can you go? Uh -huh. Well. And so I think this is in in line. It's it's in the zeitgeist. It's like good luck for you. You know, we like to do uh food challenges on our on our podcast. Oh. And um I might do that. You know what I mean? Stick it in your vagina Why or not? just <laughs> No. There's room. There's room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. We'll do. Uh, listen, I'll do a roast chicken. Do I'll do turkey legs. Do Hooters only have <laughs> wings? They must also do like the the drumsticks too, I, right? Yeah, I think so. The I mean, they don't just get rid of the other parts. No, that would be full wings. Do and, and I guess you'd tear them up in half and do one and then one, or you could fold it together yeah. and put them both in. Wow. Or it could be like one in the front and then one in the back. Wings? Why not? <laughs> You know what I mean? One of the pink, one of the stink. <laughs> yeah, that's what the wings are for. Oh, my God. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. You are fabulous. Thanks for having me on my own. Brandy you, wishes she was here. You are everything. everything. Tell everybody where they can get more of oh you. God. We have a podcast, Dumb Gay Politics, but it's political. Just bypass that. And we have a Patreon <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it's just if you want. Well, I'll say this. If you are confused about politics or you just want the basic rundown, we say this. We comment on, on politics like we're commenting on like reality a, TV. Like on the hot news. We just yeah. try and do it funny and take our take and whatever. I love that. And then we have two uh, Patreon podcasts we do, which is just silliness. And that's Great. You would find that on Patreon and Dumb Gay Politics. Um, we do singing and stupid skit. This is dumb. We just dumb and just funny. Dumb. dumb and funny. And Julie will be joining me mm. with Brandy. And Chris Frangiola and Justin Martindale, for sure. All of them are coming. Can't wait. Chance that Spencer Pratt will come. Ooh. This is a bonanza weekend that you oh. need to make happen in Vegas at the Venetian, October 22. Talk about a fun freaking weekend. Get your tickets, plan it for your birthday, this or that. I don't know if it'll ever happen again. We are going to have to go to the all-male strip review. 100%. We're going. We're doing it's it. Our Housewives Vegas trip. We're doing it. Okay. We'll definitely let's start. We're doing it. Like, who do we need to contact? Because obviously, I want to get in for free. <laughs> we're gonna pick a good one, not the okay. lame one. We're going to the good one. All right, and we're doing that. We'll be doing that probably after the show. Yep. Okay. Great. See you then. See you then. <laughs>